Alrighty folks, we're back with a collection, back by popular demand. We're going to show some primitives. Even some of you antique dealers might not have a couple of these. Right here on my take on Home and Garden. Okay guys, we have a collection of primitives that are pretty special because most of it come down through the family. Where to start? Some of you have seen some of the simpler things like a darning, sock darning, which you put your sock over so that you can fix it, you know, and you can work with it. So there's a couple of examples of those. Now, everything today we're talking about is 1800s or just into you know early 1900s if you're past 1930 you're too too young to be in this group so here's some examples of early rolling pins especially the look at this this has been repaired with the wire in there the handle isn't even the right shape anymore it's been so used you know a lot of times they would work it around like this and the rolling and one hand did more work than the other so you've seen them but it's neat to see different ones here's another one this is when they started painting the handle and trying to make it a little fancier. I know a lot of you primitive collectors have some examples. This one is all on wooden pin and rod. Next, you know the early cheeses came in wooden boxes and we have three examples of those. They're just something about them that are <laughs> catch my eye and I just love them. This one is the most recent one that we got and added to our collection and it actually has the lid. Okay, they usually don't have it all together. Breakstones, American. There's quite a few brands of these and we have three sizes for you to enjoy. Windsor brand American and they've got that age, aged patina for sure and then here's one we're more used to which is still in business which is Borden's of course and these go into the use of them probably easily into the 40s early 1800s for, for these Okay guys, still on cheese boxes. Here's the biggest one. You know, they still make a big cheese wheel. Some are way bigger than this. This is probably 1870. No, it's not a hat box. <laughs> Look at the handle, wooden handle. Look at the work. And the poor little thing just is dying to come apart, this top. And it's just a wooden band. And I noticed, it's funny, the top is pine, the side is oak. So they used what they had. Just a great example of an early cheese wheel box. Alrighty now. Now here's something probably a lot of you have seen and even more of you might say who the heck would collect those or even want them. It's a shoe form. When the cobbler was making a pair of shoes this actually has the size on it and it says 11 and a half. Boy look at that roach killer will you? <laughs> that toe on that baby. I think Margaret Hamilton had a pair of these in The Wizard of Oz. 
at least. So we have that one and we have a next size. Look at this foot. The poor thing, this is like Cinderella's foot, right? They didn't feed her, but <laughs> it's really unique. It's got a leather on the heel and you can see, this is what's cool about this one, where they tack the leather together and worked it all around and that shows up in this form. So over time these would wear out and they'd have to get a new one. All right, a child's size. Look at the age, look at the natural patina. Here again, the cobbler tack marks in the bottom as he made the shoe. Now if that isn't cool enough, I know some of you have these shoe forms, but let me ask you, do you have a baby's shoe form and a pair of them? These are amazing. Now you see the reinforced hole, so it would go over his work anvil and he could put that on that post and it would hold it for him while he's working and sewing and working on that shoe. But I'll tell you, you can find these still, they're available and primitive collectors want them. But to find, to have a pair and then have a pair in a youth size, really rare, really tough. Where are you gonna go? And I meant to show the equivalent, which is the child's rolling pin, okay? How cute can you get? Early 1800s, so when mom was making the, the dough and the cookies and the bread, the little daughter could help too, you know, with this. Then this is a wooden spoon that they work that bowl with. You see the shape? could even get your thumb in there and they would work that dough and mix that flour. Unfortunately, this one has a chip out of it. It's, it, you know, the moms and the grandmas, they have them hanging on the wall and they, it got dropped and got a chunk out of it, but it's really cool. It's all made out of one piece of wood. That's real primitive. Okay, and that goes for a spoon like this. Look how unique. Obviously out of a one piece. It's real particular. It's on a smaller scale. It's all hand cut out. And it really talks age. And that's what we mean by primitive. Early, early stuff. Now here's another neat example of early. Can you imagine <laughs> getting your cream and sugar out of a brass container? Look at this. Here's the sugar. You know, in the early 1900s, or late 1800s, they were really developing glass more and more. So at a point, it was still easier to make things out of metal in the 1700s, you'll see pewter, pot metal, cast iron. But here's your brass, sugar, and creamer. <laughs> we got some cool. Now, you guys out there, what do you figure? Guys, any guesses? No, it's not a World War II German hand grenade. If you were there, you're t really telling on yourself, <laughs> okay? These are grandma's mashed potato mashers. And they are just wonderful. This one is even mushroomed from use. You know, from so much use. You'll see that and the bottom is all worked. So there's a good bunch of examples of these for you. Now this one is really early because like I say, it's really worn 
here on the bottom as they worked it and used it. Can you imagine this? And this is how they used to have to do it. Again, these are all made on a lathe. And look at the examples, they're just all unique. Now again, here's a child's size and she could help in the kitchen. Now this is a neat example and there was another one but I can't find it. This is not a potato masher and it's not a grinder although it looks like you know you could sit there and grind with it or do this or mash maybe do your cube steaks no this is a butter maker's marker and when their butter was done and forming they put a stamp in it and marked it and the name is actually still on here I'm not gonna try to read it it's really dim and I'm not gonna take you know waste the time but that's all this is it marks their brand of butter after they made it really super cute everybody knows the washboard now there's a lot of galvanized washboards but there's also glass and these are turn of the century this is out of Ohio this company and it says two in one like wow this is state-of-the-art at the time right you got your rib side for the real dirty. You know, this would be for your probably socks and underwear. And this side is a little smoother. So you just want to work out those doilies and hankies and more fragile things. Really cool. Now we're going to do a video later. I'm actually going to do a video on making over Angela's laundry room. I'm not I'm not telling her yet, but you know, she'll see it in the editing anyway. But she has she loves her archaic stuff. And she's probably got twelve or so washboards. They're all different. So we can show that later at a different time. Something on a little bigger scale. This is a, a lot of you know, plaster on wood, early frame, 1800s. Now they had a mold, just like they did the ceiling molding. And it would, the plaster would be poured in the mold, okay? And then the wood, you can see that here. Pardon the tape, it's the only thing hold, keeping that glass from getting broke. This wooden frame, look at how it's all pieced together in like seven inch pieces to get that oval shape. That wood was put, put together, glued and spliced together and laid into the mold until that plaster cured. Okay, and then you pop it out and that plaster's gonna stick and then you're gonna prime it and paint it. Now, I picked this up at an antique shop. It's got a little beading missing and I'm gonna tediously put this back together and I'm gonna do a video on it if you care about it. I think you do and it's gonna be good and someday I want to blow up a picture of Angela and I and get it in there. Now another thing that tells these early ones, this is real, you don't, you're not going to find this today. It's a convex glass. So it comes out, or if you were looking at it from the inside, it'd be concave, right? And I would hate to break that because you're probably not going to replace that convex or concave glass. Now here's some early 
inkwells. This could be a collection just in itself. They're so cool and unique. Look at this. Thick glass, real thick, almost an inch thick on the bottom. It tapers into the middle so the pen can get it out. Okay, stopper, fits snug. It's been ground to fit perfectly there. So even if it got rocked, you know, it's not gonna leak. Now I have three, believe it or not, examples of early inkwells. This one has the top. This is probably 1920s. I wanna say 25 right there, but you'll notice the gray tint to the glass like we talked before to help you think about age. You'll really see it in this one. Look at this beaut. Just a chunk of glass with a little bit of a well. Okay. And this might have had a sterling cap. I'm just not sure about the caps or if they had one at all because it didn't come with it and either did the next one but what's really cool is I have a child's one like they would use in school that's in the same style unbelievable right how you're gonna find it so look at those the creme de la creme of the inkwell this is a wooden <laughs> It'd be so hard to make this today. Wooden tube, okay, that holds the glass ink pen. Because <laughs> the kids would have broke them like crazy. But here you go with the prepper. There's even ink on the end of this. And you would do your writing. And you'd have to get ink on there more over and over and over. Now the last thing I got to show you, a lot of you know the archaic cast iron iron. <laughs> now these were put on, you know, the wood stove and they were heated up and then of course I was going to have a pot holder but you would you would not pick that up like that. <laughs> you're going to pick it up like this. And you're going to imagine that. Iron Dad's shirt or Grandpa's britches. <laughs> Too funny. But these would get, you know, as hot as you needed. And imagine them poor little women using these. Now there is a pair. And... When I think of these and how they used them, leaving them on the stove, and I gotta tell you a quick story. The family always told through the years and years of my grandfather on my mother's side, he was the oldest of eight. And when he was born, imagine now, he was so little, like a little preemie, they had him in a blanket in a shoebox <laughs> next to the wood burning stove. So I got to share that story. So they teased the heck out of him till he was, you know, he made it almost to 100. He made it into 99 and we just loved it. We had two great grandpas that almost made it to 100. But uh, just a cute story. Now that I got the irons out, I got to show you the last over the top, sentimental as can be thing. Again, when the mom was working, the child could watch and learn, you know, the daughter. This is actually my mother's set when she was a child her little play ironing board okay basket of clothespins 
for her dolly's clothes. They're all here. They're all still here in the family. Okay? And the iron is solid. She would iron her doll's clothes to learn how to be a, a homemaker at the time. <laughs> now they don't want to hear about it. <laughs> Where are you going to go for cute? Who has their mother's ironing child's toy, ironing board, iron, and clothespins. <laughs> you gotta really give a darn to keep them. But we just, it's, it's history. You know, it's family history. That's why it, it's so important. So folks, if you liked our video today on primitive collectibles give us a like a share a comment send aunt grace over we'll fix her up we'll make her smile and she'll probably tell us about her stuff too anyway thank you guys follow us on instagram and we'll see you in the next unbelievable over the top informative collection video right here on my take on home and garden <laughs>